Good day, everyone. My name is Ignacio de Guzman III, and I would like to present to you my portfolio part 1 in this particular subject, Philosophical and Socio-Anthropological Foundations of PE and Sports. And in today's discussion, we will be dealing with the major organ systems of the body. But before we proceed, let me tell you first the objectives of this lesson. So, the objectives of this lesson are to identify the major organ systems of the body and it aims to relay the parts, use and functions, and benefits of each organ system. So, moving on, first on the list is the skeletal system. The skeletal system works as a support structure for our body. It gives the body its shape, allows movement, makes blood cells, provides protection for organs, and store minerals. Moreover, it is also called the musculoskeletal. There are two major parts of the skeletal system, axial and appendicular skeleton. As you can see in the picture, the brown shaded region of the figure is what we call the axial skeleton. It is consists of 80 bones that form the vertical axis of the body, such as the bones of the head, neck, chest, and spine. While appendicular skeleton consists with a total of 126 bones. It consists of the bones that make up the arms and legs as well as the bones that attach them to the axial skeleton. Now, let's identify what axial skeleton is composed of. Number one, skull. The adult skull comprises of 22 bones. These bones can be further classified by location, cranial bones and facial bones. The eight cranial bones form the bulk of our skull, and the facial bones help to protect our brain and there are 14 facial bones. They are found on the front of the skull and make up the face. Number two, auditory ossicles. The auditory ossicles are six small bones found within the inner ear canal in the skull. There are three auditory ossicles on each side of the head, known as the malleus or hammer, incus or anvil, and staves or stirrup. They work together to transmit sound waves from the surrounding environment to the structures of the inner ear. Number 3. Hyoid The hyoid is a U-shaped bone found at the base of the jaw. It serves as a point of attachment for muscles and ligaments in the neck. Number 4. Vertebral column The vertebral column is made up of 26 bones. The first 24 are all vertebrae followed by the sacrum and coccyx or tailbone. The 24 vertebrae can be further divided into the cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and lumbar vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae are seven bones found in the head and neck. Thoracic vertebrae are 12 bones found in the upper back. And lumbar vertebrae are five bones found in the lower back. Number five. Thoracic cage. Thoracic cage is made up of the sternum or breastbone and 12 pairs of ribs. These bones form a protective cage around the organs of the upper torso, including the heart and lungs. Some of the ribs attach directly to the sternum, while others are linked to the sternum via cartilage. Some have no attachment point and are referred to as floating ribs. Next, Let's identify what a pendicular skeleton is composed of. Number 1. Pectoral Girdle The pectoral girdle is where the arms attach to the axial skeleton. It is made up of the clavicle or collarbone and scapula or shoulder blade. There are two of each of these, one for each arm. Number 2. Upper Limbs Each arm contains 30 bones known as the humerus. The humerus is the long bone of the upper arm. Radius. The radius is one of two long bones of the forearm, found on the thumb side. Ulna. The ulna is the second long bone of the forearm, 
found on the pinky finger side. Carpals. The carpals are a group of eight bones found in the wrist area. Metacarpals. The metacarpals are five bones found in the middle area of the hand. And phalanges. The phalanges are 14 bones that make up the fingers. Number 3. Pelvic Girdle The pelvic girdle, commonly known as the hips, is where the legs attach to the axial scaleron. It is made up of two hip bones, one for each leg. Each hip bone consists of three parts, known as the ilium. The ilium is the top portion of each hip bone. Ischium. The ischium is a curved bone that makes up the base of each hip bone. And pubis. The pubis is located in the front part of the hip bone. Number 4. Lower limbs. Each leg is composed of 30 bones, known as the femur. The femur is the large bone of the upper leg. Tibia. The tibia is the main bone of the lower leg. It forms the shin. Fibula. The fibula is the second bone in the lower leg, found in the outer leg. Patella. The patella is also called the kneecap. Tarsals. The tarsals are the seven bones that make up the ankle. Metatarsal. The metatarsals are the five bones that make up the middle area of the foot. And phalanges. The phalanges are 14 bones that comprise the toes. Number 5. Joints Joints are the areas where two or more bones meet. Joints allow the bones to move in different ways. Most joints are mobile, allowing the bones to move. There are four types of movable joints. Number 1. Hinge Example of this is knee and elbow. Number two, ball and socket. Example of this is shoulder and hip. Number three, pivot. Example of this is neck, wrist, and ankles. And number four, gliding. Example of this is knuckles, wrist, and ankle. So, speaking of joints, there are six types of joint movements. Extension, straightening or extending a limb or opening a joint. Flexion, bending or flexing a limb. Abduction, moving a limb away from the center line of the body. Adduction, moving a limb towards the center line of the body. Circumduction, the ability of a limb to be moved in circles. And rotation. This is a turning or rotational movement of a limb or body part. The functions of the skeletal system are to protect internal organs from injury, allow movement, produce blood cells, store minerals and nutrients, and to serve as a support to our body. Next from the list, the muscular system. It is an organ consisting of skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscles. It permits movement of the body, maintains posture, and circulates blood throughout the body. The muscular systems in vertebrates are controlled through the nervous system, although some muscles can be completely autonomous. There are three types of muscles in the body. Number one, skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles are the only muscles that can be consciously controlled. They are attached to bones and contracting the muscles causes movement of those bones. Any action that a person consciously undertakes involves the use of skeletal muscles. Examples of such activities include running, chewing, and writing. Number 2. Smooth Muscle Smooth muscle lines the inside of blood vessels and organs, such as the stomach, and is also known as visceral muscle. It is the weakest type of muscle 
but has an essential role in moving food along the digestive tract and maintaining blood circulation through the blood vessels. Smooth muscles act involuntarily and cannot be consciously controlled. Number 3. Cardiac muscle Located only in the heart, cardiac muscle pumps blood around the body. Cardiac muscle stimulates its own contractions that form our heartbeat. Signals from the nervous system control the rate of contraction. This type of muscle is strong and acts involuntarily. So, the functions of the muscular system are the following. Number 1. Mobility The muscular system's main function is to allow movement. When muscles contract, they contribute to gross and fine movement. Gross movement refers to large, coordinated motions and includes walking, running, and swimming. Fine movement involves smaller movements such as writing, speaking, and facial expressions. Number 2. Stability Muscle tendons stretch over joints and contribute to joint stability. Muscle tendons in the knee joint and the shoulder joint are crucial in stabilization. The core muscles are those in the abdomen, back, and pelvis, and they also stabilize the body and assist in tasks such as lifting weights. Number 3. Posture Skeletal muscles help keep the body in the correct position when someone is sitting or standing. This is known as posture. Good posture relies on strong, flexible muscles. Stiff, weak, or tight muscles contribute to poor posture and misalignment of the body. Long term, bad posture leads to joint and muscle pain in the shoulders, back, neck, and elsewhere. Number 4. Circulation The heart is a muscle that pumps blood throughout the body. The movement of the heart is outside of conscious control and it contracts automatically when stimulated by electrical signals. Number 5. Respiration Breathing involves the use of the diaphragm muscle. The diaphragm is dome-shaped muscle located below the lungs. When the diaphragm contracts, it pushes downward, causing the chest cavity to get bigger. The lungs then fill with air. When the diaphragm muscle relaxes, it pushes air out of the lungs. When someone wants to breathe more deeply, it requires help from other muscles, including those in the abdomen, back, and neck. Number 6. Digestion Smooth muscles in the gastrointestinal or GI tract control digestion. The GI tract stretches from the mouth to the anus. Food moves through the digestive system with a wave-like motion called peristalsis. Muscles in the walls of the hollow organs contract and relax to cause this movement, which pushes food through the esophagus into the stomach. Number 7. Urination The urinary system comprises both smooth and skeletal muscles, including those in the bladder, kidneys, penis or vagina, prostate, ureters, and urethra. The muscles and nerves must work together to hold and release urine from the bladder. Number 8. Childbirth Smooth muscles in the uterus expand and contract during childbirth. These movements push the baby through the vagina. Also, the pelvic floor muscles help to guide the baby's head down the birth canal. Number 9. Vision Six skeletal muscles around the eye control its movements. These muscles work quickly and precisely and allow the eye to maintain a stable image, scan the surrounding area, and track moving objects. 
If someone experiences damage to their eye muscles, it can impair their vision. Number 10. Organ Protection Muscles in the torso protect the internal organs at the front, sides, and back of the body. The bones of the spine and the ribs provide further protection. Muscles also protect the bones and organs by absorbing shock and reducing friction in the joints. And number 11, temperature regulation. Maintaining normal body temperature is an important function of the muscular system. Almost 85% of the heat a person generates in their body comes from the contracting muscles. Let's now proceed to the circulatory system. The circulatory system, also called the cardiovascular system or the vascular system, is an organ system that permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, and blood cells to and from the cells in the body to provide nourishment and help in fighting diseases, stabilize temperature, and maintain homeostasis. We have here the major parts of the circulatory system. First of them is the heart that pumps the blood around the body. It sits inside the chest and front of the lungs and slightly to the left side. The heart is actually a double pump made up of four chambers with a flow of blood going in one direction due to the presence of the heart valves. The contractions of the chambers make the sound of heartbeats. Next is the blood. Blood carries oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients to waste, and more throughout the body. It is consist of the red blood cells that carry oxygen, white blood cells that make up part of the immune system, platelets which are needed for clotting, and plasma where blood cells nutrients, and wastes float. And lastly, the blood vessels. Blood vessels have a range of different sizes and structures, depending on their role in the body. So we have the arteries, where oxygenated blood is pumped from the heart, which are muscular. Capillaries. Capillaries are so small that blood cells can only move through them one at a time and veins have one-way valves instead of muscles to stop blood from running back the wrong way they carry the oxygenated blood from the body to the heart the main functions of the circulatory system are circulates oxygen and removes carbon dioxide provides cells with nutrients removes the waste products of metabolism to the excretory organs for disposal, protects the body against disease and infection, and clotting stops bleeding after injury. To summarize the circulatory system, I would love to share a song that covers all the information that we need to understand regarding to this particular organ system of our body. The heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. The heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. The heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. Circulatory system. The heart is an organ that pumps the blood. The blood is a liquid that gives us life. The blood vessels are the pathways of blood circulatory system. Moving forward, we have here the nervous system. The nervous system is the collection of cells and tissues that form the structures and organs involved in collecting and processing sensory information and the triggering reactions. It is broke down into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The major parts and functions of the nervous system are the following. The central nervous system is just the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is the rest of the nervous tissue in the body 
and the sensory organs that the nervous tissue attaches to. It includes the cranial nerves that branch out from the brain and the spinal nerves from the spinal cord, as well as all the sensory organs in the head and body. Central Nervous System We have the brain, which is enclosed completely by the skull. The brain is composed primarily of nervous tissue. These remarkable organs consist of about 100 billion cells called neurons or nerve cells that enable everything from the regulation of breathing and the processing of algebra to performing in the creative arts. The brain is divided into the cerebrum, diencephalons, brainstem, and cerebellum. We have also the spinal cord that contains fewer cells than the brain. With only about 100 million neurons, it enables the brain to communicate with most parts of the body below the head and neck. It is also able to carry out certain functions on its own. The peripheral nervous system passes information between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. Under this kind of nervous system, we have the following. Nerves that carry signals to and from the central nervous system. Cranial nerves, which is originating from or traveling to the brain. And spinal nerves, originating from or traveling to the spinal cord. So to summarize the parts and functions of the nervous system, I have here a diagram that appears on the screen. Under the central nervous system, we have the brain and spinal cord. Under peripheral nervous system, we have the cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Under peripheral nervous system, we have the sensory or afferent division and motor or efferent division. Under the sensory division, we have the somatic and visceral sensory division. Somatic sensory division carries general sensory signals from muscles, bones, joints, and the skin, as well as special sensory signals. And visceral sensory division carries signals from organs. Under the motor division, we also have somatic motor division and autonomic nervous system. Somatic motor division carries signals to skeletal muscles, and autonomic nervous system carries signals to smooth and cardiac muscles and glands. Next from the list, we have the respiratory system. The respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help us breathe. This system helps our body absorb oxygen from the air so our body can work. It also cleans waste gases such as carbon dioxide from our body. The major parts of the respiratory system are number one, nose. The nose is the only part of the respiratory system that is visible externally. Number two, mouth. The mouth, also known as the oral cavity, is the secondary external opening for the respiratory tract. Number three, larynx. Larynx, also called voice box, a hollow, tubular structure connected to the top of the windpipe or trachea. Air passes through the larynx on its way to the lungs. Number four, pharynx. Pharynx, cone-shaped passageway leading from the oral and nasal cavities in the head to the esophagus and larynx. Number five, lungs. The lungs' main function is to help oxygen from the air we breathe enter the red cells in the blood. Number six, diaphragm, is a dome-shaped sheet of muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen. We have here the respiratory system functions. The respiratory system starts at the nose and mouth and continues through the airways and the lungs. Air enters the respiratory system through the nose and mouth and passes down the throat or pharynx and through the voice box or larynx. In addition, its main job is to move fresh air into our body while removing waste gases. Let's now proceed to the endocrine system. The endocrine system is responsible for regulating a range of bodily functions through the release of hormones. 
Hormones are secreted by the glands of the endocrine system, traveling through the bloodstream to various organs and tissues in the body. The hormones then tell these organs and tissues what to do or how to function. The major parts of the endocrine system are the following. Number 1. Hypothalamus While some people don't consider it a gland, the hypothalamus The major parts of the endocrine system are the following. Number 1. Hypothalamus While some people don't consider it a gland, the hypothalamus produces multiple hormones that control the pituitary gland. It is also involved in regulating many functions including sleep-wake cycles, body temperature, and appetite. It can also regulate the function of other endocrine glands. Number 2. Pituitary The pituitary gland is located below the hypothalamus. The hormones it produces affect growth and reproduction. They can also control the function of other endocrine glands. Number 3. Pineal This gland is found in the middle of our brain. It's important for our sleep-wake cycles. Number 4. Thyroid The thyroid gland is located in the front part of our neck. It is very important for metabolism. Number 5. Parathyroid Also located in the front of our neck. The parathyroid gland is important for maintaining control of calcium levels in our bones and blood. Number 6. Thymus Located in the upper torso, the thymus is active until puberty and produces hormones important for the development of a type of white blood cell called a T-cell. Number 7. Adrenal One adrenal gland can be found on top of each kidney. These glands produce hormones important for regulating functions such as blood pressure, heart rate, and stress response. And number 8. Pancreas. The pancreas is located in our abdomen behind our stomach. Its endocrine function involves controlling blood sugar levels. Some examples of bodily functions that are controlled by the endocrine system includes number one, metabolism, number two, growth and development, number three, sexual function and reproduction, number four, heart rate, number five, blood pressure, Number 6, appetite. Number 7, sleeping and walking cycles. And number 8, body temperature. Let's now move on to the digestive system. The human digestive system consists of the gastrointestinal tract plus the accessory organs of digestion. Digestion involves the breakdown of food into smaller and smaller components until they can be absorbed and assimilated into the body. We have here the major parts and functions of the digestive system. Number 1. Mouth The digestive process starts in our mouth when we chew. Our salivary glands make saliva, a digestive juice, which moistens food so it moves more easily through our esophagus into our stomach. Saliva also has an enzyme that begins to break down starches in our food. Number 2. Esophagus after we swallow, peristalsis pushes the food down our esophagus into our stomach. Number 3. Stomach Glands in our stomach lining make stomach acid and enzymes that break down food. Muscles of our stomach mix the food with these digestive juices. Number 4. Pancreas Our pancreas makes a digestive juice that has enzymes that break down carbohydrates fats, and proteins. The pancreas delivers the digestive juice to the small intestine through small tubes called ducts. Number 5. Liver Our liver makes a digestive juice called bile that helps digest fats and some vitamins. Bile ducts carry bile from our liver to our gallbladder for storage or to the small intestines for use. Number 6. Gallbladder. Our gallbladder stores bile between meals. When we eat, our gallbladder squeezes bile through the bile ducts into our small intestine. Number 7. 
small intestine. Our small intestine makes digestive juice, which mixes the bile and pancreatic juice to complete the breakdown of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Bacteria in our small intestine make some of the enzymes we need to digest carbohydrates. Our small intestine moves water from our bloodstream into our GI tract to help break down food. Our small intestine also absorbs water with other nutrients. Number 8. Large Intestine In our large intestine, more water moves from our GI tract into our bloodstream. Bacteria in our large intestine help break down remaining nutrients and make vitamin K. Waste products of digestion, including parts of food that are still too large, become stool. And number 9, Rectum The lower end of our large intestine, the rectum, stores stool until it pushes stool out of our anus during a bowel movement. The Benefits of the Digestive System Digestion is important because our body needs nutrients from food and drink to work properly and stay healthy. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and water are nutrients. Our digestive system breaks nutrients into parts, is small enough for our body to absorb and use for energy, growth, and cell repair. Proteins break into amino acids. Fats break into fatty acids and glycerol. And carbohydrates break into simple sugars. And last from the list, we have the reproductive system. The reproductive system includes the male reproductive system, which functions to produce and deposit sperm. And the female reproductive system, which functions to produce egg cells and to protect and nourish the fetus until birth. Humans have a high level of sexual differentiation. Under the male reproductive organ parts and functions, we have the penis. The penis consists of the root, which is attached to the lower abdominal structures and pelvic bones, the visible part of the shaft, and the glans penis, the cone-shaped end. The opening of the urethra the channel that transports semen and urine is located at the tip of the glans penis. The base of the glans penis is called the corona. In an uncircumcised males, the foreskin or prepuce extends from the corona to cover the glans penis. Scrotum. The scrotum is the thick skin sac that surrounds and protects the testes. The scrotum also acts as a climate control system for the testes because they need to be slightly cooler than body temperature for normal sperm development. Testes The testes are oval bodies that average about 1.5 to 3 inches or 4 to 7 centimeters in length and 2 to 3 teaspoons or 20 to 25 millimeters in volume. Usually, the left testes hangs slightly lower than the right one. The testes have two primary functions. Number one, producing sperm which carry the man's genes, and number two, producing testosterone, the primary male sex hormone. Epididymis The epididymis collects sperm from the testes and provides the environment for sperm to mature and acquire the ability to move through the female reproductive system and fertilize an ovum. Vas deferens The vas deferens is a firm tube, the size of a strand of spaghetti that transports sperm from the epididymis. Urethra The urethra serves a dual function in males. This channel is the part of the urinary tract that transports urine from the bladder and the part of the reproductive system through which semen is ejaculated. Prostate The prostate lies just under the bladder and surrounds the urethra. Walnut-sized in young men the prostate enlarges with age. When the prostate enlarges too much, it can block urine flow through the urethra and cause bothersome urinary symptoms. Seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles located above the prostate join with the vas deferens to form the ejaculatory ducts, which travel through the prostate. The prostate and the seminal vesicles produce fluid that nourishes the sperm. 
This fluid provides most of the volume of semen, the fluid in which the sperm is expelled during ejaculation. In the female reproductive organ parts and functions, we have the external and internal structures and function. Under external structures and functions, we have the labia majora. The labia majora enclose and protect the other external reproductive organs, literally translated as large lips. The labia majora are relatively large and fleshy, and are comparable to the scrotum in males. The labia majora contains sweat and all secreting glands. Labia minora, literally translated as small lips. The labia minora can be very small or up to 2 inches wide. They lie just inside the labia majora and surround the openings to the vagina and urethra. Bartholin's glands. These glands are located beside the vaginal opening and produce a fluid or mucus secretion. And clitoris. The two labia minora meet at the clitoris, a small sensitive protrusion that is comparable to the penis in males. The clitoris is covered by a fold of skin called the prepuce, which is similar to the foreskin at the end of the penis. Like the penis, the clitoris is very sensitive to stimulation and can become erect. Under internal structures and functions, we have the vagina. The vagina is a canal that joins the cervix, the lower part of uterus, to the outside of the body. It is also known as the birth canal. Uterus or womb. The uterus is a hollow, pear-shaped organ that is the home to a developing fetus. The uterus is divided into two parts. The cervix, which is the lower part that opens into the vagina, and the main body of the uterus, called the corpus. The corpus can easily expand to hold the developing baby. A channel through the cervix allows sperm to enter and menstrual blood to exit. Ovaries. The ovaries are small, oval-shaped glands that are located on either side of the uterus. The ovaries produce eggs and hormones. And lastly, fallopian tubes. These are narrow tubes that are attached to the upper part of the uterus and serve as tunnels for the ova or egg cells to travel from the ovaries to the uterus. Conception, the fertilization of an egg by a sperm normally occurs in the fallopian tubes. The fertilized egg then moves to the uterus where it implants into the lining of the uterine wall. To finalize the overall lesson, let's proceed to the Generalization The skeletal system works as a support structure for our body. The muscular system is an organ consisting of skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscles. The circulatory system is also called the cardiovascular system, an organ system that permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, and blood cells to and from the cells in the body. The nervous system is the collection of cells and tissues that form the structures and organs involved in collecting and processing sensory information and the triggering reactions. It is broken down into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help us breathe. The endocrine system is responsible for regulating a range of bodily functions through the release of hormones. The human digestive system consists of the gastrointestinal tract plus the accessory organs of digestion. Digestion involves the breakdown of food into smaller and smaller components until they can be absorbed and assimilated into the body. And lastly, the reproductive system. It includes the male reproductive system which functions to produce and deposit sperm. And the female reproductive system which functions to produce egg cells and to protect and nourish the fetus until birth. So, that would be all. Thank you very much for your time and effort of watching this video. Stay safe and God bless.